Hey guys, Darcy here, and today we're going to talk about some of the mixer controls you have that you may not be paying attention to. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so we have a, a session pull up here created for the purpose of this demonstration that's basically just going to give us a kitchen sink of everything that uh, we can do with our mixer in terms of, you know, enabling things that you may not see uh, or disabling things to your benefit. So just here where my mouse is, we have a list of all of the main control sections with inside of the actual mixer. And by default, you see that it highlights the first four because based on how tall my screen is I can see the first four sections also based off of what's like hidden or closed if I close something let's say I hide enough here now I can see the whole list now that everything is highlighted if I open back the console because it's so tall you know I don't see everything so as I scroll up and down you'll see that the highlights show me more or less one thing you may not realize this circle here allows you to disable sections that you don't want to see. So for instance, I just hid the cues, but I could bring the cues back. Uh, I scroll down there. So if I, you know, hide them and show them. So for instance, I have a mixing template set up where I actually hide the cues. They're pre-routed to send the main to my headphones and then I hide them. So you could pre-configure a bunch of things and then hide it and not see it at all if you didn't need to see it in your template. After that, we have open and close, and these are pretty straightforward. They either close everything or open everything uh, all at once and then we also have a large button and a small button which will basically make a lot of the icons and other sections more visible but let's close everything and open certain things up one by one and then we have a fixed slot section which if you see here we uh, for our inserts we only have one track and then the next track uh, is you know there for us to click and add something to it uh, and by track I mean the next row of inserts if we click fix slots then we basically everything across the session where you have tracks and sends it gives us the full list the full eight for everything um, that is enabled to us right out of the gate if you want to see it like that and then we have some modifiers for things like power, so we can click and then disable stuff, uh, remove, copy, and set to default. Uh, and then our console view, which opens up, shows all, all of our tracks, and we can apply console to them, which I already have done. So now let's get into some of the finer tuned things we can do within each of the sections. So within our input, we have a button that gives us a bigger view for icons to see for the input. I personally don't use this one myself, but then we also have ability to toggle down and see more flexibility in terms of settings within the input row. So if we click that, we'll see that, uh, for instance, on our MIDI track here where we have an input, uh, we have some additional controls. I won't get into those right now, but just so you know, you may ha have some additional controls on your track that you're not seeing right here. Typically, I have this one closed myself as I my workflow. Uh, I tend not to need that. When we go to our tape row, though, and we click the same button, it gives us our expanded view, and now we get additional options. On these first two tracks, we have the Studer, and the Studer actually has additional controls in terms of how much driving that we're sending to it and the reproduction of our EQ, and we have individual controls that we can do per track. But again, we can select multiple tracks, and then we can drive them both at the same time. With our Oxide, we don't get any additional controls. Controls. It's just the one saturation up. And then with our ATR-102 tape, we get the ability to set how much we are putting in our uh, record and our reproduction volume so we can get our gain staging right so we can push more in and then reduce more out. Uh, and we can turn off uh, the link parameter so that we can do that individually. And again, each one of these instances is its own so you can have that individual control. Then we can open up console here and we the option that we have on the left hand side it basically toggles all of the consoles to the same setting so the input the dynamics and the eq you can flip between them whereas the api 2500 only has a dynamic section so it always stays on that section as we scroll down here we see that for our inserts right now we have the smaller view which basically is just a, a statement of what the the plugin is but if we click this we get an expanded view and let's say we add a different plugin into one of these chains uh, we'll get basically a larger icon when we reduce it we don't have any icon at all so if you like seeing the icon because it's a quick way for you to find the plugins that you want uh, to open up that's the way you can do it. Then when we go down to the sends, and I'm gonna open up the cues because this is also very similar. 
we have the ability to expand our send. So by default, we just have this nice little knob here that we dial in, our pre-fader, whether we want that on or not, and whether we want to mute it or not. But when we expand this view out, now we get some additional controls. We get an actual uh, fader that is just a lot easier to work with than a knob. We also have the ability to choose how much we want to pan this. So we could say, for instance, be processing the signal one way, but panning it to a different part as we're sending it away. Maybe we're trying to get some wide kind of effect. Maybe we're putting our track to the actual left, but we want the reverb to come out on the right, and that's going to have an interesting sound for us. And if you have a track like this MIDI one here, where it's a stereo signal, then we can also have that control on our left and right uh, signal path. We also have the ability to invert the signal. Now this applies across the entire track. So it's not inverting it, what you're sending and leaving your track not inverted. It's inverting the entire track. When it comes to our headphones, we have this similar starting point with our pre-fader, mute, and a knob. But when we expand out, we also get very similar controls in terms of uh, the ability to fade and to run our slider. Uh, so a this can be really good in our cues for the ability to say the artist wants to hear the guitar on one ear, but then they want to hear their voice on another ear. You can have that, that ability to kind of set that up where you're not affecting the actual mix. And that's actually really all that there is to that in terms of all of the individual settings you have here. You know, these are just some minor adjustments that you can make within the mixer to make it work better to for you. Additionally, you know, when you're setting up your templates, you can configure these things individually. Personally, I like having my sense set up in a way where I can always see the track view, but I hide my cues. I like seeing my plugins uh, expanded out uh, as well as also seeing my tapes expanded out so that I can get that individual control. Uh, these things I find very beneficial and quick in the workflow. But again, you configure it how you want. And just if you didn't know that these settings were here, now you do. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, just let me know in the comments. <laughs> Peace, y'all, and have yourself a good day.